Hello and welcome to program 18 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our email list, then please go to markplex.com, markplex.com, and uh, I'll let you know when I release new programs or tutorials. If you uh, down download today's program, you actually get a smooth CCI indicator, a strategy based on the Markplex smooth CCI and the smooth CCI function, which is actually protected. So you can open the program and the indicator, but you cannot open the smooth CCI function that both the indicator and the program call. So let me just show you, if you were to download this, how you would install it. It's extremely straightforward. You would go to where you've saved the program on your computer, double click it, takes you to the uh, import wizard. You just click next and finish. And in my case, I've actually already got these on my computer. So I'm just going to say no there and uh, it's just going to do its thing. Having done that, you would then go insert strategy and you would insert the strategy program 18 that you've just uh, or rather underscore program 18 that you've just installed. You do the same for the indicator. I've actually already got them uh, applied to this chart. I'm just going to ch change the status to on. And one thing just just uh, at the outset to say is that the indicator is just the CCI, but make sure that the CCI inputs that are set for the indicator are the same as those which are set for the strategy. Otherwise, you're not comparing apples with apples. And uh, as the program is delivered, they are the same, but they are not automatically sync together. So uh, what I will do now is just go through the inputs to the strategy and there's quite a uh, detailed number or rather large number of uh, inputs and we will uh, try and explain those. They're also explained at markplex.com in, uh, in some detail, probably more detail. So I've got the program open here and you'll see that I've added some comments next to each of the inputs, which may be helpful for you. So first of all, high frequency. If this is set to one, then we allow a new divergent signal to reverse the trade. If it's set to zero, then we have to be flat before we can get into a new trade based on a divergent signal. Smooth CCI fast div. If this is set to one, then we look for, we also look for divergence between price and smooth CCI fast. That is, if you look at the chart, you'll see on the indicator, that is the, the red line there. One price piv div. All this means is that we, instead of looking for two CCI pivots and two price pivots, we look for two CCI pivots the first price pivot and then instead of looking for a second price pivot we just simply take what the price was at the second CCI pivot. Pretend div if this is set to one then we look for trades based on potential divergence between the CCI and price. Pretend two div this means that we look for secondary divergences and the way that I've defined this is two CCI pivots and three price pivots and we just ignore the second price pivot. So to give you an example on the chart, since we're looking here for divergence between the fast CCI, this is this red line and price, you'll see that we have a pivot here which corresponds. We also have a pivot here in the middle, price pivot, which we're going to ignore because we're looking for what I've called secondary divergence. And then we have another price pivot, which we compare with the, the, uh, the second CCI pivot. Okay, CTS, this is the number of contracts we trade. Trail Val, in this case 61, it is expressed as the a multiple of min move divided by price scale. And for, for example, a long trade, the initial trail val would be set as equal to entry price minus 
trail val multiplied by min move over price scale. Target one, target two. Target one is for a long trade equal to the entry price plus target one times min move over price scale. And target two is equal to target one plus, rather, I shouldn't say target two, TGT2 um, multiplied by min move over price scale. Then first TGT CTS, first target contracts, that is the number of contracts that we take off at the first target and the remainder we take off at the second target. The next inputs are all to do with defining the CCI, length, fast length, which are just like the, the trade station CCI, but we've also got these smoothing factors for the, uh, for the CCI, smooth length and fast smooth length. The next little block here are all to do with pivots and uh, if you uh, if you're unfamiliar with the trade station pivot function then you might wish to just look that up in help and you'll see the various inputs explained there bar tolerance this is to do with the fact that cci and price pivots don't necessarily line up on the same bar so this gives us a little bit of tolerance as to how far apart they can be to still be considered the same when calculating whether divergence has occurred and then price l is the uh, price low that we're using to calculate low price pivots and price h is the value that we're using the price stream that we're using to calculate high price pivots in this case i've just used low and high and then finally the uh, the last two inputs are just uh, for show really if uh, show lines is set to false then we only see the trailing uh, the uh, the trail val shown on the chart in red for today's date and if it's set to true you'll see it throughout the chart and then line separator determines vertically how far certain divergence lines are from each other just so you can see a little bit more clearly sometimes you get two different colors of divergence lines and this helps you to see both uh, both colors by separating them a little bit and uh, incidentally if you do go to markplex.com i've uh, explained all these inputs in great detail there I've also include some screen grabs and uh, towards the end of the description i've also included the divergence color key which explains what the various colored lines mean and where they're located, what their position is. So you could read through that if you need more detail on that. An additional uh, feature of the strategy is a section uh, of filters. And uh, I'll just show you that in the program. And what I've done, I've actually got it, got this commented out, but I've given you an example of how you would set this up. Because in the, uh, the variables, all the filters are set to true. So, if you don't do anything, they don't have any effect. However, you could define your own filters, and I've included some comments here. And the example I've given is a stochastic filter. So I've said, essentially, if I uh, wanted to use this filter, long filter equals O slow K is less than 25, and short filter O slow K is greater than 75. So in other words, long filter is true if O slow K is less than 25, and it's false if O slow K is greater or equal to 25 and uh, these filters are within all the, the trades so for example to make a long trade the long filters all have to resolve to be true and similarly for the short filters to make a short trade you uh, the filters would have to evaluate true and so this is an example of say a very simple stochastic filter you could do up to three long three short just using this basic functionality in the program. And if you wanted to use this particular uh, filter, you would just remove the curly brackets there and press F3 to verify. Okay, so if you wanted to optimize the inputs, you would click on strategies, you would double click on the input values, and then 
you would go about optimizing them. Now, the first several inputs, high freak down, um, down to pretend to div, the valid settings are either zero or one. So to optimize them, you would simply click zero, one, and an increment of one. And you could do that for several of these inputs here. And then anything numeric you can optimize. Having done that, you would then click optimize. I've done a, a basic optimization for this strategy. Uh, one thing that you probably want to make sure is that you do, when you do optimize, make sure that you have uh, reasonable amounts in for commission and position slippage. Not sure if these are the right values in this particular case, uh, but um, that's what I've used here. And um, then having done that, and having done an optimization, you'll probably want to have a look at the strategy performance report. So anyway, um, that is a brief introduction to program 18, both strategy and the indicator. I hope uh, you might find them useful and thank you very much for your attention.